Hey guys, this is Sal with Sales Media, and this is going to be another beginner's episode for AutoCAD. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to hatch. Hatching is very important because you're going to be able to differentiate what your actual objects are. It's very important to hatch in your professional use as well because when you deliver a product to the client, you want the client to be able to understand where your drawing is because sometimes your drawing is a little bit of a mess and you're going to want to be able to have your client understand exactly what it is that you're trying to depict because the client doesn't really have any experience with the type of work that you do so he's going to want to be able to read it easily now for the purpose of this video I stole a little bit of what I do for my job I took everything that's confidential out of the drawing so that there's no issues with that with the employer that I uh, did this for and I want to show you guys how I actually use this in the real world because it's very important so you guys can understand how important it is to use these concepts that I teach you guys so if you can see here on the drawing what I want to show you guys is the purpose of what each hatch is now this is a uh, survey that I did it's an Alta survey basically what I do is I measure everything that's on a lot so uh, here you can see that I measured all the concrete I measured the building I measured the streets the curb all the storm drains etc etc right so when I deliver this to the client or the uh, employer uh, finally signs and seals this, he's going to send this to the client and the client's going to want to know what exactly it is. So we make it easier by showing them with a hatch on what each object is. For example, this building here has a certain type of hatch with some diagonal lines. You can see here one story brick commercial building. This hatch for the concrete is going to be a, a smaller scaled hatch, which is going to be like sand. And this bigger hatch, which is, uh, is on a bigger scale, it's still sand, but it's on a bigger scale. That way uh, we can tell the difference between the concrete and the asphalt. So you can see that this hatch is for the asphalt pavement. Now we also hatch in a smaller scale, diagonal pattern on the parking signs here, on the parking spots for the no parking for the handicaps. That way in the real world, you're able to see you know where it is and what it actually is pertaining with this drawing to and that's pretty cool that's what we use hatching for so that you guys can easily be able to tell what each object is now let's go ahead and open a another drawing here and I'm going to teach you guys how exactly it is that I hatch now this is a drawing with nothing preloaded onto it this is just exactly how it comes when you open it I drew two rectangles here on the top left and I put them there. Now what I want to do is I want to actually type in the word hatch. So let's go ahead and type in hatch. And nothing shows up other than this little box up here. But what I really want to focus on is the settings. So type in settings. And a box opens up with all the settings that you really need. And to be honest, I don't mess with any of these things on the left side. I usually just focus here on the top right. Now, the important things you guys will want to know is the type of pattern. Here you can choose the pattern that you'd like, and you can see each one has a name. Let's go ahead and try brick, just because you guys know what a brick should look like in real life. You can see here that it shows you a little drawing of what the actual hatch is gonna look like. You can also change the hatch color. I'm gonna choose, let's say, yellow, an easy color to see. And you can also choose a background color on your hatch. So you can choose, let's say, I'm going to choose magenta. Actually, that doesn't show up very well. Let's choose green. Yeah, that doesn't show up very well. Okay, I'm going to try red. How about that? <laughs> so now we have two colors, the hatch color and the background color. And now what you can do is change the angle of that hatch. So you can type in literally any angle that you want. Let's say the brick is going to be up and down. Let's go ahead and put in 90 degrees for that instead of zero, which is going to be straight. So now we have 90, and you can also change the scale. The scale determines how small or how big your hatch is going to be. So if you're working like on a house, it's going to be on a bigger scale than if you said um, had a desk and try to hatch that. A desk, a desk is gonna be a smaller scale and a house is gonna be a bigger scale. So let's go ahead and try 20, see if that shows up well, because I'm not sure the size of the rectangles that I drew right now, honestly. So let's try that. After you change all the settings, go ahead and pick OK. And now what you can do is, as long as you have the crosshair here on your mouse, go ahead and pick inside of that point, inside of that object, and you're able to hatch that object. 
Now, another thing that you can do is when you type in hatch, you can either type in the word select, which is either selecting an object, or you can type in the word pick, which is picking an internal point inside an object. Now, you can't use pick if the uh, hatching is going to be inside an object that is not closed. Let's say an object has a gap and you're not able to actually hatch inside of it. What you can do is you can, let's say, have this object here and you can type in hatch and type in select. That way you're able to multiple select two lines and you're able to actually hatch inside of that. Now it's not going to be per perfect, that's why I don't recommend that you hatch something that doesn't have a closed uh, border on it. If it has a gap, it's not going to really hatch very well. That's why it's very important to draw with your object snap or at least know that everything is intersecting at a certain point because when you try to hatch after that, it's going to be a huge mess. Sometimes your AutoCAD can actually crash if you hatch something that is not closed and then it tries to hatch everything in your drawing. It's going to run out of your uh, memory from your computer. It's going to be loading too much, and that's why it crashes. So it's very important to make sure that you have no gaps in your objects, in your drawings, and that's why the object snap is very useful if you're on the bottom right. So that's hatching there for you guys. If you guys end up hatching something and you want to change the settings on it, but it's already hatched, what you can do is you can select that hatch that you already did, and you can look here on the right side on your properties and there's going to be properties that you're able to change and you can see here on the pattern tab here you're able to change the angle which we were able to do on the settings box there that showed up you can also change the scale uh, i'm going to change it to 30 and i'll show you guys that it actually did something so i'm not sure if it showed up let's try, let's try 50. there you go now you can obviously see that changing the scale here actually did something and that's very good. You can also change the colors here as well. So if you guys end up hatching something and uh, you already did it but you wanna change it last minute, you can go to the properties here on the side and you're able to change that. And that's pretty much it for hatching guys. Go ahead and play around with all the types of hatches that there are. Go ahead and experiment because you're gonna to wanna to be able to know what's actually in AutoCAD and what you can do with it. You guys can be artistic and have fun with it. If you guys like this, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and go ahead and share, guys, if you guys have anybody that wants to learn AutoCAD, somebody that you have in mind, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.